So as for the Fallout show, I have not been able to watch actually as much as I, I wanted to, but we did start it and I am thoroughly enjoying it. It's actually struck a really good balance and tone. I won't get into any spoilers or anything because I know some people are waiting to like the weekend to watch it. And I'll also ask everybody in chat not to uh, not to spoil anything. So I'll speak very vaguely, but I I think they've actually done a really, really good job with it, especially the production design is so well done. Like there's so many little nods, whether it's like the junk cannon, which you see at one point or the little bitty stuff with like, you know, somebody gets injured and they heal themselves with a stim pack or just like so many little bitty nods to the games where if you know the games, you'll pick up on them and go like, oh, that's awesome. But if you don't, you can still enjoy it. Now, funnily enough, I was actually watching this with, of course, my wife, Nikki, and she has never really played the Fallout games. She was going to try playing Fallout 4, but she uh, got through the like intro of Fallout 4 where the kid is kidnapped. And when she was trying to play it, we had just had Lachlan. And so she was like, nope, 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 can't do that. It, it was just too much for her. So she shut the game down and went and played like The Witcher 3 or something. And so she's never played the Fallout games. So she has had no exposure to the lore or to those little bitty things. So it was interesting seeing her watch the show and try to fill in the blanks. And so I'm very familiar with Fallout as a franchise, but she's not familiar really at all. So we like we were able to watch uh, whatever episode, you know, and then we could go back and she'd be like, so what was going on here? I don't know what that was supposed to be, or I don't know why they did this or said that, you know, what's this character? Who are the Brotherhood of Steel? Like, this is kind of weird. So it was really, really interesting to kind of get the two opposite sides of the, the spectrum watching it at the same time. So my takeaway is that for people not familiar at all with Fallout, it is tough to follow at first. Similarly to like The Witcher, show when that first dropped you know season one of the witcher on netflix where it was very like it was very very like it jumped around a bunch between different characters and timelines and stuff so if you weren't already familiar with the story you might have trouble figuring out what's going on and she said that she was having similar frustrations where they were just bouncing around a ton um i it settles into itself and you know once the timelines and stories kind of group up and start to interweave a little it's easier to follow but at, at first it was tougher to follow so i i think it's very uh, like there's a lot of fan service a lot of things that fans of fallout will appreciate but i think if you're totally new to the franchise it might be a little tough to follow uh, at first but beyond that i think yeah somebody mr mirror i'm still at episode two one hour of episodes feels long for me i will say the episodes are, are quite long i think the first episode's like an hour 15 the second one is similar so there are long episodes for sure. They try to cram a lot in there. Um, and in terms of pacing, you know, they're they're fine. It, it, they do tend to drag a little bit, but I've, I've really enjoyed it. And I feel like it takes the world of Fallout seriously. I, I saw some people saying that Bethesda was trying to retcon all of like Fallout New Vegas and stuff. I haven't finished the show, so I don't know for sure but it doesn't seem like the retcons are that hefty. It seems like they've wiggled some stuff around a little bit, but it doesn't seem like they've totally scrapped like New Vegas or anything. They haven't done anything like that, which some people were kind of acting as though they were, but it's it's not that bad as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, apparently it's like one of the last episodes that they do or they mention New Vegas or something, and it's particularly frustrating for some hardcore fans. But as of right now, I haven't seen anything super super bad i mentioned at one point that the show is is really solid but it makes me wish we had gotten also a fallout game from a different studio and i think it's because like i mentioned this before but fallout 3 and fallout 4 i, I they're built around being escapist entertainment and i showed that clip of emil pagliarulo mentioning that and that was kind of one of their premises when designing the game is that it's escapist entertainment you just try not to get wrapped up in the seriousness of all of it and I think that that's reflected in the stories that they tell. That's reflected on a lot of the, the things. And while the show has nods to it, like at one point they show a kid climbing out of a refrigerator. You know, he had kind of guarded it himself in, in the refrigerator during a big conflict, bringing up that 
side quest in Fallout 4, like the show takes itself much more seriously. In Fallout 4, that side quest is laughably terrible because the kid's supposed to have been in there for like 200 years, like a very long time. And then he just like casually pops out and goes and finds his, finds his parents and everything is fine. Like it's really, really weird. So I, I think I appreciate more than anything that the show takes the story very seriously, but it reminded me just of how not seriously the games take their story. And that's always been a frustration of mine that like Fallout 3 did a better job of it than Fallout 4. Fallout 4 is just weird because like, oh, your kid's been kidnapped. Go save them. But first, spend an hour tearing apart buildings and then building a little bitty base. And then also go over here, get distracted, collect some bobbleheads and and stuff. And then, yeah, you should probably get back to finding your child who's been kidnapped and the murderer of your spouse. But, you know, only get to that once you've had some fun elsewhere. You know, it just doesn't take itself super seriously. And part of that's by design because they want you to just goof around and not like be miserable. But I feel like Fallout 4 tried to do both. It tried to be just escapist, silly, goofy entertainment while also trying to put a really intense story in front of you. And so it just didn't do either as well as it could have. Similarly with Fallout 3, it just doesn't have a very good story. But I think that the way the, the game is built is much better than Fallout 4. I think it works way better. Because you can justify just leaving your father to go wander around and like do whatever he's doing. You can justify exploring the world more and you can role play a little easier. Whereas in Fallout 4, if you're taking the story seriously, you're just going to have a bad time. And similarly with Fallout New Vegas, they built it in a way where they tell you straight up. And this was one of the, the interviews. I forget who it was, but um, one of the writers for Fallout New Vegas said they wanted to make sure early on that if players wanted to just abandon the main quest to Fallout New Vegas, they could do that and that they'd be supported in doing that because they wanted to have everything set up in a way where you can make your own story and if you follow in the footsteps of their story and what they've outlined cool go to new vegas and meet mr house and all this but if you don't want to do that you don't have to just go wander around do whatever doesn't matter and that's the difference between a studio that's trying to make a role-playing game first and foremost and a studio like bethesda which is kind of making their own genre in real time. They just kind of do their own thing. Whether it works or not is up in the air. But all of this to say, the Fallout show has reminded me just how compelling the Fallout universe can be for telling stories. And it, it especially reminded me that we haven't had a really good Fallout game with, with Fallout stories in over a decade. And that's kind of frustrating. Which of the main protagonists is the, the strongest? I think it depends. I think they each are reflections of different paths you can take if you were to find yourself in that situation. Um, you know, you can lean fully into just the craziness and the, the chaos and the drugs and everything. Or you can try to pursue uh, uh, like strength and power and force. Or you can try to, to seek out compassion and some of the more human elements that are, are more civilized. It's interesting. Again, I haven't finished it yet, so I'm not sure which of the characters I like the most, but they each have their own quirks, their own specific uh, traits, which I, I really like. I really like. Um, do you prefer this show or The Last of Us? And let's throw Arcane in two. I mean, honestly, like they're just different. Like I know it's easy to just be like, well, they're both video game adaptations, so let's just compare them. But I don't think it's that straightforward because The Last of Us is an adaptation of a game which is built primarily around the narrative. I mean, that's it's pretty much a story game and that's that. Whereas Fallout, I think personally, is a much tougher thing to adapt because it's so open-ended. And of course, with this, it's an original story. So it's not like they just took the story of Fallout 4 and are just turning that into a video game. In this case, like they're writing something from scratch. So I guess you could say that's a freedom, but it's also a restraint at the same time because there's a lot more... You got to do a lot more heavy lifting for sure. So I, I would say at this point, based on what I've seen, I think the Fallout show is more impressive to me because it's an original story and I think it's a lot harder to turn Fallout 4 into a show, but they're different. You know, I just think they're different. As for Arcane, I haven't finished Arcane. Don't get mad at me. I know, I know, I know, I know. I haven't finished it. I start. I got like an episode in. 
and then something happened. Edge Runners is maybe another good comparison. Edge Runners is also up there with this, where it's also very unique, very original, but true to the source material. They're both very, very good. Everybody after the Fallout show has been like, oh, geez, so I wonder now if we're going to get, you know, like a, a, a Elder Scrolls 6 or Elder Scrolls just in general TV show tie-in. It just makes sense. Like they've made 15 versions of Fall or of uh, Skyrim. Why don't they do a, a TV show based on Skyrim? And Todd Howard has said, as of right now, there's nothing that's happening. He said, quote, everybody asks like about Elder Scrolls and I keep saying no also. You know, if someone's going to click, I think this really came out of, we think things are aligning to do a high quality job. It wasn't forced. And he continued, I can't predict the future, but this has been one of the most enjoyable projects I've ever done. And we're just over the moon, everybody in the studio with seeing it in this way. Very clunky way of saying it, but basically they don't have anything in the works right now for an Elder Scrolls adaptation. It's it's not been on their, their to-do list and they haven't heard any pitches that really made sense. After the Fallout show's success, I think they probably push it uh, and, and try to make it happen. You might see Amazon come and contact them uh, once we see how the rest of the show does, if like over the next few weeks, it continues to do well. So I, I would expect we probably see something because it just makes too much sense. Like Elder Scrolls is a huge IP. They're about to drop about to in like three, four years, but they're going to drop Elder Scrolls six. So it just makes sense. Start working on it now. Drop a show tie in shortly before or shortly after the new game. Get people to buy it for 70 bucks. Like, why not? Why not? It just makes sense, right? I think Elder Scrolls is particularly tough to adapt like fallout is very unique but for the average consumer i think the elder scrolls just kind of comes off as generic fantasy and i know i'm going to trigger the crap out of some people with that but it I, I really think that to the average consumer it is just fantasy yeah i think it's because that's what it is and i think it's particularly difficult to adapt something that is just very milk toast compared to Fallout, where you see one outfit from the Fallout universe and you know what franchise it is. You know, it's it's extremely iconic. It's very, very unique. Whereas Elder Scrolls, like if you were to do a, a live action version of this shot, minus the, the helmet. Okay, just get rid of the helmet because this is like very uniquely uh, Skyrim, this specific shot. But if you were to just do like a, a village like this and then rework it so it's real life, it could be The Witcher. It could be from Wheel of Time. It could be The Elder Scrolls. It could be from like Rings of Power. It could be from any sort of things or just Vikings. Yeah, I think that that's the particularly difficult thing about adapting it. I think that that's uh, why Fallout is probably easier to adapt than this, but they still could find success with it. Don't get me wrong. I think there's potential like within the lore of Elder Scrolls to do some interesting things. But when you're trying to sell something to Amazon Prime subscribers, like an interesting storyline that you'll catch on to two, three, four episodes in, that's not as compelling as just having a super iconic, very unique setting that you can sell very easily. Like those first, like, I wonder if I can actually pull it up. Um, like you just see this and you instantaneously know it's fallout. Even if she wasn't wearing the vault outfit, just the shape of the doorway tells you fallout, you know, whereas the average uh, person looking at Elder Scrolls stuff, isn't necessarily going to be able to tell, oh, that's the Elder Scrolls. It's going to come off as generic fantasy project number five. And what stories do you tell in the like universe of the Elder Scrolls that are going to be really, really compelling to a brand new audience? Because again, that's what they're trying to appeal to with these shows. They're not trying to just keep gamers happy. They're trying to get everyday people that have an Amazon Prime subscription to watch it and to feel like their membership is justified. And why do they have X-ray? What the hell is X-ray? Is that like the thing where you can click on somebody and it tells you who they are? I bet that's what it is. Like, oh, HDR, UHD, that's nice. And then they're like, yeah, we also have X-ray. Wow, they've really taken the production values up a bit. So I understand his hesitance to commit to anything. 
I, I think it's a lot tougher to adapt the Elder Scrolls than Fallout. Could work. Could work. But no, I, I know Morrowind's not generic. But if they're trying to pitch something to Amazon Prime, I don't think they can do Morrowind the show. I think if they pitched it as Skyrim, but a show, executives are going to eat that up. Like they could do Elder Scrolls Arena the show. I don't think that ever gets greenlit. I, I don't think that ever gets a budget <laughs> given to them. But I think if they framed it as, oh, well, it's Skyrim, like that really successful video game that's on your Alexa and your, your like TV and everything. You can play it on your toaster. I think they agree to that much, much quicker. Music